we are just delighted that you decided to be with us for our Wednesday Bible study. Uh, I tell you, it's been such a blessing to all of us, and we're just so grateful that you've taken the time uh, in your home to do this study with us. And I tell you, it's been an exciting time for us. So we encourage you, if you've got some friends who love to study the Bible, just call them up, text them, hit them up on Facebook, DM them, whatever you need to do, and just say, hey, why don't you get on and be a part of the study here at the Transit Gardens Church of Christ. And we are delighted to have two uh, my comrades in the faith, great ministers of the gospel of Christ, uh, Brother Mark Thorne, who serves as the minister of the Huffsmith Church. Yes. And Dr. Eddie Winslow, who serves with us here at the Trinity Gardens Church. And Eddie, can you give us an opening prayer, if you could? Our God and our Father, your name is great and greatly to be praised. You just to mention and the thought of you inspires us yes. to all. We thank you that you brought us together to fellowship in the study of the word. Uh, we pray for those that are joining us. Uh, through social media, that yes. all of our eyes, our ears, our hearts might be open. We pray for the healing of our brothers, uh, Brother Arthur White, Brother Raph Draper, and yes. Lord, that you would teach us today and change us for our good and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Eddie, for that amen. prayer. And um, we're studying from the book of Romans, but before we get started, I just want to uh, uh, let the audience know a little bit more about the two of you. Okay. Uh, Marv, you are, yeah. tell us a little bit about Huffsmith. Of course, Marv, you're a Prairie View man, too. That's okay. right. I'm a, I'm a proud Prairie View graduate. PV, yes. as well That's as right. being kind of my fraternity brother. That's, right. That's all right. That's but tell right. us a little bit about uh, Huffsmith, where it is, and kind of what you guys are doing. Sure, sure. Um, as Tim mentioned earlier, I'm the minister at the Huffsmith Church of Christ. We are in, the, uh, we're in Tomball, Texas, uh, located at 24802 Old Husmith Corville Drive. A popular landmark is uh, an eatery called uh, Mel's Diner. We're right down the street from that. But I've been there for uh, almost two years now. Oh, okay. okay. And we, uh, in August, as a matter of fact, we will be celebrating our 75th anniversary. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. 75 yeah. Right. years. 75 That's a long years. Time, yeah. And so for the month of August, we'll have a variety of speakers okay. uh, each Sunday, and uh, and our own brother Tim Daniels will be closing us oh. out that fourth Sunday mm -hmm. in, in okay. August. He's going to come and celebrate with us, and we just appreciate uh, Tim for his mentorship and his ministry. As a matter of fact, Tim, when I was reading uh, the write-up, uh, historical write-up, mm -hmm. that uh, some of the uh, long-time members prepared, your name was listed as one of the ministers who would help out periodically wow. when mm -hmm. the church was looking for, uh, when the church was between ministers, yeah. for lack of a better way of saying it. Yeah. But we look forward to seeing you. Our uh, Sunday school starts at, at 9.15, worship starts at 10.15. So if you're ever in the Tomball area, stop by and see us. We'll be glad to have you. Thank you, Marv. Appreciate that. Yes, good old Huffsmith. Uh, and Eddie, as we said earlier, he leads our uh, criminal justice ministry here at this church. Very, very important ministry. So, Eddie, can you just share a little bit about what that ministry is doing? Well, we are, of course, criminal justice ministry at Trinity Gardens Church of Christ. What we are doing is uh, right now we're building a team. We just started up following COVID. Everything was shut down pretty much as far as going in units and doing uh, prison ministry during COVID. Uh, we started back up and we reframed it as the criminal justice ministry because we want to kind of broaden what we are doing to do more than just go in prisons and teach. We wanted to do something uh, to lower recidivism. Now, That's if powerful. yeah, if you are not aware of it, there's uh, 14,000 people on parole in Harris County and, and 15,000 released from Texas Department of Criminal Justice to Harris County every year and another 10,000 people in the county jail. So we have to do something about this. So this is a, right on our doorsteps and this is our Jerusalem. This is where we have to minister to. So I thank God for Tim's leadership and for all the leaders at uh, Trinity Gardens as they are supporting us in this endeavor. You can call the church if you have an interest, if God is placing this on your heart. 
You can call the church, ask for me, or let me give you my personal number, which is, uh, which is a criminal justice number. It's 867 737 9669. Again, 867 737 9669. There's always a good time to talk about ministry. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ed. Appreciate that and the great work that uh, you all are doing. And, we're, and speaking of um, freedom, which is part of where we are, yeah. let's talk about Romans. Okay. okay. <laughs> because Romans, we've been studying the last couple of weeks, I guess, about the book of Romans. And I'll tell you, the book of Romans is challenging. It, mm -hmm. it, it really is challenging. And I think the author, Paul, uh, he wrote it. It was a challenge to him because it showed how God had changed him. And basically, <clears throat> as I understand it, it's a book about the fact that everybody needs grace. Yeah. Everybody needs grace. Mm -hmm. And this was a multicultural church, and, which is what the bite of Christ should look like. But within it was a group of Jews who came up thinking that in order to get God's grace and God's favor, you got to earn it. Yeah. You got to earn it. You got to work for it. Yeah. And you got to be good enough for God mm -hmm. to save you. Mm -hmm. And so they became Christians. Sure. But, you know, when we come to Christ, we bring our baggage with yeah. us. We do. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We do. And we so do. when they came in and now they're with people who didn't come with that baggage. And some of those people, they knew nothing about Pentecost. They knew nothing about the, the Ten Commandments even. They didn't know anything about the Feast of Tabernacles or circumcision. And these Jews were somehow implying to these non-Jews, hey, guys, y'all are not doing it quite right. Yeah. You need to keep some of these rules because we came up keeping them. Yeah. And then Paul, who had not been to this city before, is going to write this letter and because if he didn't get this straight, it could split this church. So he's going to have to tell them, hey, guys, everybody needs grace. And because you came from this background of keeping the rules and you guys are Jews, it doesn't make you better than anybody else. And we saw that in the first two chapters. I think he started off by saying the Gentiles need grace in chapter yeah. one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then he said the Jews need grace. Mm -hmm. And now that takes us to chapter three where he's going to talk about kind of everybody needs grace. And I want to look at chapter three verses, uh, the first few verses, and either one of you, if you want to take it from there, and he's going to talk about some questions that they may ask. And so if either one of you want to talk a little bit about that, uh, feel free. Uh, okay. You come. We go ahead. Okay. I looked at the uh, first verse, and, and what I did, it says, what advantage then has the Jew? And I read that, and this is what I saw, then a response to everybody needs grace, then what advantage is it? Being a Jew is kind of the question. Yeah. What, what's the profit of, what good does it do to be circumcised? And he answers, he says, much in every way, chiefly, chiefly because to them, to the Jews, was committed the oracles of God. Yeah. That the Jews were given God's word. The Jews protected God's word. Yes. The Jews made sure God's word was accurate. If you remember in John, the fourth chapter, Jesus is talking to the Samaritan lady. Mm -hmm. And she is, because uh, when you study the Samaritans, the Samaritans had bad doctrine. They had, uh, they had twisted the word where uh, Mount Gerizim was, has taken the place of Jerusalem. Yes, so all the yes, important things yeah. happened on this mountain and not there. Yeah. So she starts to talk to Jesus about the mountain. And he says, well, we Jews, yeah. we know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, y'all wrong now. Yeah, but yeah. We, we, we love you, but your doctrine is bad. Our doctrine is good, but sometimes our hearts can be bad. Mm. And mm. That's where it seems he's saying is that although, you know, re remember in 1 Samuel, the, the prophecy is uh, that God, God tells him, he said, God, don't look on his stature. God looks mm -hmm. at the heart. The heart. Yeah. And yes. they have somehow misconstrued that all the way because they believed God was looking at the flesh and yes, the work and right, the work, yeah, yeah. And so that's the point he's making to them. Yes, yes, yes. That question, Mark, if you want to? Sure. Yeah. Um, something that I, that I like that surfaced uh, within these, uh, within these first, uh, within these first four verses is how regardless of where we are, 
in life, social position, particularly mm -hmm. as it relates to this context, because you have Jews and Gentiles who were divided among, you know, their social, their social mm -hmm. differences. He lets us know that God's faithfulness transcends those barriers. Wow. Yes, he, yes. Even yes. when we, that in other words, God is going to stay true to his word mm -hmm. to everybody, regardless of who we are and especially who we are not. Yeah, 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 I got yeah, you. yeah. That's yeah. where grace yeah. comes yeah. in. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah the, the Jews were the yeah. sons of Abraham. They thought they were here, but they were not. The Gentiles were viewed by some Jews as second class Christians, mm -hmm. but according to God's standard, they were not. He was faithful to his righteous standard for everybody, right. regardless of who they were, right. and especially who they were not. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, he, so Paul, like you guys said, Paul is anticipating the questions. Yes. And I think that tells us when we're dealing with people, we need to anticipate yeah. the sure. questions. Sure. And he could anticipate the Jewish questions because he would have been a Jew, right. a staunch Jew. Right. So Ed, as you said before, what advantage? He said, ah, guys, there are some advantages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He gave you the word. Yeah. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. I, and I just think the fact that even today we have this word, we ought to really treasure that. Because there are people all over this world they can't pick up a Bible and just read it. Right. Some can't read. Our forefathers wow. were, they couldn't read. Sure. Back in the state sure. of Texas and many other states in the South, it was against the law yeah. to teach a person of color to read. Really? Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. yeah. And he said, guys, y'all had this word. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, the second question was, I think more of you addressed it. Uh, they asked, well, in verse 3, okay. what if some are unfaithful? So you're talking about we all sinners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, some of us don't get it right. Does that mean God is not going to do what he says he's going to do? Yeah. I like what Paul said. Verse 4, not at all. Uh -huh. yeah, your, not. your brokenness, certainly yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and you know, I like the fact that our brokenness does not thwart God's will. Wow. Because yeah. his grace is not based on our perfection. Sure. And he's going to sure. go, yeah, a little bit further. And then, so he anticipated these questions, and you see those questions in the first uh, three or four verses there, and and then they say something kind of interesting. It would be it's odd to us. The other question that they asked, I begin uh, in verse five, kind of a sophisticated logic. Say, okay, Paul says you say God's righteousness shines brightest when we mess up. Well, we all just keep messing just up. Mess up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Isn't it amazing how we justify? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. They say, so, so you say that God's righteousness just shines and mm. it's just bright when we are broken and we keep sinning. So we ought to keep sinning. And Paul said, oh, Lord, no. Yeah. yeah. He said in verse five, he says, but if our righteousness. Oh, he said in verse four, not at all. Let God be true and every, every human being every liar. liar. That's yeah. about uh, their faithfulness. Verse five, but if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust and bringing his wrath on us? Why would God bring his wrath on us for messing up yeah. when, when we mess up, it makes him look good? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, and Paul is dealing with these arguments in verse six. Sure. Certainly not. Uh-huh. If that were so, how could God judge the world? God is still going to judge, like you guys yeah, said, right. his standard. And then let's talk about this next part where he talks about how I call it being unrighteous from mm -hmm. head to toe. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, with verse nine, either one, if you want to kind of comment on verse, well, verse nine, 10, 11, where he talks about how man is all messed up. Yeah. OK, well, I could read it right mm -hmm. quick if you don't mind. I'm reading from the New King James Version. What then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Look mm. at the imagery here. <laughs> their throat is an open tomb Ooh, with their yeah. tongues. They have practiced <laughs> deceit. Their poison, the poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed innocent blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Ooh, wow. 
<laughs> that's uh, kind of re reminds me of the, of the first chapter. He's saying that the whole culture yeah. is, is rotten. It's rotten. rotten. That's right. Your, that's your, right. your, your <laughs> thinking is rotten. Yeah. And then he starts dealing with different words that talk uh -huh. about what your words, you know, your thinking is, is, is rotten. Your words are evil. Your ways are evil. <laughs> He said, yeah. all of you, and that new King James, he said, there is none, there is none, there is none. Yes, yes, Over yes. and over again, they have all Oh, uh -huh. He said, there ain't none righteous, all of y'all. Yeah. yeah. But that is, that is like yeah. you said, Eddie, that's none, none. None, none, And he keeps none. saying, yeah, don't yeah. get the big head, yeah. do not get the big that's head, right. thinking you're better than anybody else. None of you. Yeah. And again, the message to those Jews were, do not think for one moment you're better than these other people. That's right. Because he keeps saying, none, none yeah, of you. None, none. And you know, when you look at this, it kind of convicted me because he goes from head to toe. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> if you have sin in the head, you sin in the toe. Yeah. You're gone somewhere, your mouth, you've said. And this hits all of us. Yes. This is all, all of us. And then he gets to the thinking down there later when he says in 17, and the yeah. way of peace they do not know. Yeah. And then he says, there's, uh, there's no fear of God before their eyes. No eye. fear. No. Yeah, no fear of God. Yeah. And this tells us what we are like and can be like without God. Mm. I've said before, this is scary to me because I mm. know this is me. Yes. Mm. Without <laughs> God. Yes. Yes. And, and I think, too, when I read this, Paul wrote this. And I think Paul is looking in the mirror. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He this calls himself the chief. The chief of sinners. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, he said, I'm not just a sinner. I was the, the chief yeah. sinner. Yes. Because what was some of the stuff Paul did? Paul was yeah. a bad matter, man. Yeah, yeah, matter of fact, in, in, some, uh, in some passages, the Bible said that he breathed threats against the church. Yeah, yeah. Acts 9. Breathe. Yeah. yeah. That's in, you know, we breathe yeah. involuntarily. Yeah. yeah. It sustains our life. So, you know, one way of looking at it is he was living to yeah. do harm to God's people. Mm -hmm. he, he thought he was right, but mm -hmm. in actuality, he was, he was wrong. You know, he was living to do harm to God's people. Thinking is evil. Uh, in Philippians 3, he referred to himself, what, as a Hebrew of Hebrews, mm -hmm. uh, a Benjaminite. So the chief of centerpiece, it, it, you know, it points back to how Paul was so driven and so focused mm -hmm. on participating in something that was not, uh, that was not the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That was not, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> that did not yeah. align with what God expected was, for humans to do at that right, time. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right, yeah. right, right, yeah. right, right. Paul was a bad man. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I really do believe, like you say, he was looking at this and he said, boy, yeah. this, is, this yeah. is you, but mm -hmm. this was also mm -hmm. me. Yeah, but, but also in verse number 18, when it says, there is no fear of God before their eyes, I just thought about two, uh, two places in the Bible, Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Mm. But, you know, fools despise wisdom and instruction. And Psalm 111, where it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you have someone who is unwise and also not willing to learn. Yeah. Because yeah. they lack the fear. No, yeah. no, no, God. no, no, no fear of God's yeah. presence. I, I noticed, too, that Paul, if that was boasting, he had everything to boast about the sure. you know like the benjamite the yeah. jew the uh mm -hmm. learned uh pharisee of the pharisees everything that you would think of in the flesh was on his side yes but then he yes. knew who he was on the inside yes yes yes, yes. 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 he, he yes. saw yes. himself he yeah that, that's he amazing is if i can see myself mm-hmm but on the inside. Naked, the naked way God on the inside. can see me like, wow. Sure. And you know, that to me is the heart of turning to God, where you can see yourself the way God sees you. Yes. Yeah. You know, not the way other people see mm -hmm. us. I got a nice house or a nice car. Mm -hmm. or yeah. I got these. Mm -hmm. But when we see ourselves the way. Mm -hmm. Paul would say later on, oh, wretched man that I and am. I am. <laughs> he said, <I'm> who? <laughs> but, but, can there, but can there be true repentance if we don't see ourselves this way God sees us? Wow. Well, yeah. 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 There's, there's uh, I think, and I think the word, and y'all can correct me as well. I think uh, spacey eternitati, uh, subspacey eternitati. Is looking at things through God's eyes, mm. whatever that term yeah. is. Yeah. Like, man, when 
I look at myself and if I could see myself the way God can see me where there's no shadows, mm -hmm. you know, I am a wretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm nasty, I'm yeah. unclean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. And then when we come to God see. and he gives us value, we can wow. see to people who are already broken, right. you can see your worth and your value. Sure. It is amazing how God can take it. But if you're up here, God said, I'm going to bust you down, let mm -hmm. you know yeah. what you're lacking. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, here in the text too, um, did I try? Okay. In the text too, thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. In the text too, yeah. um, in verses 19 and 20, I like that. He said, For we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth <laughs> may be silenced and the whole world be held accountable to God. Okay. Mm. He said, I gave you the law basically to shut your mouth and let you uh, see how messed up you mm -hmm. are. And then in verse 20, therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become <coughs> conscious of our sin. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, as I gather this, he's, they thought that the fact that we had the law, mean Ten Commandments and all those rules on the Old Testament, okay. I think that's how it's used okay. here that because they had it and they kept some of them, the ones they wanted to keep, mm -hmm. that made them basically superior. And actually, that granted them access to God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, access to God. He said, no, 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 no. The law was to let you know how messed up you are. Yeah. That's what it is. It is a mirror for you to look in That's right. to say, listen, oh, mm -hmm. you may do a few of them, yeah. but I want you to know that you're really messed up. You know? Yeah. It humbles you to let you know you need grace. Yes. Wow. Yes. yes. They yeah. looked at the law yeah. and a few rules they kept to say, oh, I don't need grace because I got it together. Uh -huh. But he said, uh-uh, you guys got it twisted. Yeah. Those Ten Commandments and all those laws under the Old Testament, the law and the prophets, were to let you know you need That's grace. right. Yeah. That's right. They, yeah. They uh, compared themselves to other people and not to God's standard, you know, so I can always mm -hmm. find somebody that can make me look good. Yes. If I look right. at them, you know, but if I look at God's word and his perfection, I, that takes away that me looking good. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. You know, Paul would say to the, letter, to the Corinthians, I think in 2 Corinthians 10, Eddie, where you mentioned it, Paul was talking about how they compared preachers and apostles. And mm -hmm. then he said, comparing themselves yes, among, among themselves. themselves. He said, that ain't why. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. no, because you're comparing yourself to an imperfect standard. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's no way you're gonna get an accurate reading mm -hmm. comparing this, yourself to it. I mean, even if we look at rulers, there's always a margin of error. Even though it says 12 inches, yeah. there is a, a margin of error. Right. Because it's, you know, it's human made. Yeah. You know, and comparing ourselves to other people, we are measuring ourselves by an imperfect standard. And a works-based yeah. salvation does that. Yes, because it does. If, it does. If, if I'm saying God has saved me because of my work and how good I am, I'm going to look at Eddie yeah. you and say, Eddie, you ain't doing You enough. ain't good. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. you, you, you never yeah, you're doing some yeah, things, yeah. but you ain't good enough. Exactly. Oh, I'll look at you, Bob, and you're doing uh, more than I'm doing, and I'm going to feel lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yes. Eddie, you were talking about that earlier. Yes. And so he's going to, and so what he, I, as I gather, he's doing these first three chapters, special chapters two and three. He's saying, guys, this is sin. Mm -hmm. This is what sin looks like. Right. And, you know, he, in chapter one, he's very graphic at what the he Gentiles is. were doing. Yeah. Yes. Then he moved, which was more external. Then he moved to the heart and say, you Jews, you all are messed up too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then now he's going to say, now let me tell you what righteousness looks like. He said, uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, you know, what righteousness looks like. And he's going to say what, it, uh, beginning, I think, in chapter 3. And yeah. he's going to say how you get it, beginning with verse 21. Uh -huh. And he's going to, I'm going to just read this first verse. He's going to say, but now, wow. apart from the law the righteousness of God has been made known. Mm. So he's going to talk about, first of all, this, this righteousness. It's, a, it's separate from uh, the law, these rules. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. It's not a righteousness. Yeah. So those, <clears throat> those laws and rules in the Old Testament did not make you righteous. righteous. No. Yeah. No, it didn't. 
Made me guilty. Made me guilty. Yeah, that's yes, it. Was. Yes, yes, that, that's yes, it. Yes. It didn't make yeah. you righteous. Yeah. It made you guilty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Mark. Did you want? To oh oh no, I'm, I'm waiting. It's, I'm, I'm waiting till we get to it. Till we get to that point. Y'all jump in now. He, he I'm holding, I'm holding one back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm waiting. Let me tell you, you got one this, in the chamber. This, this will <laughs> shift your paradigm. Yes. Yeah. And how we think of religion. Yes. Wow. And our relationship to God. Mm -hmm. Sure. Because man tends to think. In fact, many of the major religions in the world are works oriented. In other mm -hmm. words, it's man is the initiator of mm -hmm. everything. Right. If, if man gets it right, mm -hmm. then, okay, God, you need to accept me. But right. Paul is going to shift the paradigm here. Yeah. So he's going to say it's a part, all, circumcision, all that stuff that you're doing is a part. Then he says in verse 22, this righteousness is given through faith. Faith. That's faith. what I was waiting on. Yeah. In Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ to all, to all who, who believe. believe. You know, you see, I said earlier that no one, nobody, yeah. now he's saying, but guess what now? This yeah. grace is for everybody. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the part about the part about being about faith in Jesus Christ. If we if we think about this in Revelation 2 10 when the Bible said, be faithful unto death mm -hmm. and we'll receive a crown of life. It didn't say be perfect unto death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It said be faithful. Yeah. Whereas the law, a person would have to be flawless yeah. in order to line up with the law. And that's right. And God knew that it was not humanly possible to do it. So he yeah. used the law to serve his purpose. Mm -hmm. And in a larger scheme of things was for us to have a greater appreciation for what we have through Christ yeah. that was not available under the law. But that part about faith in Christ, what stands out to me is how he tells us to be faithful unto death yeah. Yeah. as opposed to being perfect unto and death. You, wow. Yes. And it's the throne of grace. Grace. Yeah. Not the throne of perfection. Yes, right. sir. You know, so, right. yeah, boy, that's something. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. And then he goes in and he says through. And here's how kind of I see, especially the salvation process. Okay. He said it's given through faith in Christ. Yes. Now, I, it took me a minute, kind of my theological journey, to understand really sure. what that meant. So to me, Christ, when he died on that cross, that was a perfect sacrifice. sacrifice. Oh, absolutely. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Jesus had a chance to get even. Yeah. yeah. He could have held a grudge. See. He could have said, I ain't doing this. Uh-huh. But he kept his, the, the assignment that God had given him perfectly. Yes, uh, yeah. No animosity, right. yeah. none. And yeah. he was our substitutionary sacrifice yeah. yes. on that cross. Verse 25. Now, I think, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, verse 25. And he's yeah. saying, oh, there it is. God yeah. presented Christ. That, thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood. So when I come before God, this yeah. is really is exciting. Uh -huh. I don't say God accept me based on anything I did. Yeah. yeah. And y'all talked about Paul. Yes. All his, his pedigree. But I'm putting my trust in you accepting me on what Jesus did. Yeah. He met the standard. He met the standard. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I cannot meet the standard. No. On yeah. my best day, I right. can't meet yeah. the standard. Mm -hmm. My worship can never be perfect. Right. It can never be perfect to God because I'm in this human body and I'm mm -hmm. broken. Mm -hmm. But my salvation, and, and here's the good thing about it. That means that no matter who I am or where I came from or mm -hmm. what mistakes I made. Mm -hmm. yeah. He talked in chapter one about how Jack, I mean, he talked about some bad stuff yeah, before yeah. we were in chapter one. <laughs> yeah. Bad stuff. <laughs> yeah. He's saying, even you. Yeah. Because it's not based on you. Yeah. You trust what Jesus did. Yes. And God said, I'll accept you. I'll accept uh -huh. you because of him. Right. Yeah. And, and, and to your point, Tim, when you look at it, the law pointed out imperfections, right? Mm-hmm. The prophets, though they were outstanding men, they were imperfect. Mm -hmm. Yes. Only, Only Jesus. Only that's Jesus. Right. Only Jesus was perfect. Yeah. Th that's right. Yeah, that's so right. He, what he offered was greater than the law mm -hmm. and the prophets. Yeah. To, to your point. Yeah. You know, to your point. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and you know, in verse 24, he said, and all are justified freely. 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 By. By grace. <laughs> you, don't, you can't buy it. Mm -mm. You can't work for it. No. <laughs> what, come, you come and what? Eat. Bread at no price. No price. He, he, he paid it all. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and we owe everything to him. It, 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 it's amazing. Now, that's good news. 
Hey, that's good that's news. Good news. You tell me I got to measure up to something. Hey, let me shake your hand on that one. <laughs> that, that ain't good news because I've, I've failed all of that. So if you tell me there is a way in spite of my unrighteousness, in spite of my darkness, that there is a way to get into God's kingdom. That's good news. That's good news. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I, and you know what? I'm glad you brought it home. That's why the gospel is called good news. Good news. Yep. Yeah. That no matter yeah. what you've done, how long you've done it, sure. where you've been, sure. how messed up you that's are. Right. <laughs> wow, that's, that's, right. that's real good news. It, that's good news. Yeah, that's good that's news. Good and news. I think to those who are watching us now, you need to tell your friends to, to look at this Bible, cl this class we're having. Because sometimes we have friends, I know I have had some, yeah. and I have some now, mm -hmm. who think I've drifted so far away. Mm -hmm. I've done things that are so horrible, there's no way God can accept me. But this is good news. Yeah. Because he said it's by grace. That's right. And it's for all. All you have oh. to do is put your trust in what Jesus yeah. did. Oh, we winding down with our time is by gone, but let's couple a couple of more. And he says in verse... Um, he comes on down, and you look at verse, we talked about verse 24 and verse 25, and then in verse 27, I just want to say, he said that, where then is boasting? Mm -hmm. He said, what you got to brag yeah, about? What I got to sure. brag about. Yeah. <laughs> look, no religious person has a right to brag about anything. It's, it's excluded. Nobody. And he's talking to those Jews yeah. who were bragging about the mm -hmm. fact that we kept Pentecost, we yeah. keep the Passover, we have been circumcised. Now, yeah. we're Christian. Yeah. yeah. But hey, I like to brag, I, you know, we, we, we kept the law. Mm -hmm. He said, it is excluded because of what law? The law that requires works? No, because of the law that requires faith. Yeah. If it's faith in Jesus, you ain't got nothing to brag about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For we maintain that a person is justified, here it is, by faith mm -hmm. apart from, from the, the works, works of, of the, the law. law. He sums it up. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Praise God, because we all mm -hmm. Gentiles yeah. sitting up here. Yeah. Yes, of Gentiles too, since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through the faith. same faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. We uphold the law. And I think what he's saying that even if you look at the law, the law pointed to the fact. Yes. yes. That somebody would come. That's right. That would justify you. Uh huh. Because you know you messed up. Yes. Realize. And realize I'm, that I messed I'm not up. Gonna do it. Mm -hmm. You know what? I can't believe where the time went. I think we are out of time. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> but thank you all for, for um, watching us. And uh, like, like, like we said earlier, you can call us if you would like to know more about um, being a part of that family of God mm. by grace. Yeah. We all grace preachers here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all yeah. three of us, yeah. we yeah. just straight up grace preachers yeah. because all of us are saved by the grace of God. Yeah. And Amen. so be with us uh, next time for uh, as we go through this study. Yes, and sir. again, if we can help you in your walk with God, just call the church, 713-633-3326, uh, I think. Go to our website, email us. And we'd be happy to share with you that same grace that saved us. Amen. Amen. Amen.